We got uh, another week in the books, another week without a deal to avoid going over the fiscal cliff, and there's just one more month left of trading this year. So what is in store for investors this December? Let me bring in Stephanie Link from the street, David Kelly from J.P. Morgan Funds, and our own Bob Pisani and Rick Santelli. Good to see everybody. Stephanie Link, let me get your take on investing around this fiscal cliff and all this uncertainty. Uh, but before that, give me your take on this Morgan Stanley rebalance. What do you think happened at the end here with the uh, market up just about a point? Well, I, I think that it just added to the volatility, right? I mean, because I think that's the theme for the next couple of weeks is that we are going to see a very volatile environment until we get a resolution. And so in the short term, you're kind of trading range bound in the market. And I think you want to take advantage of the extremes. So into these big positive moves, you take a little off. It's not a bad thing to take profits and to have cash. But I do think that when you see the market pull back and you see extremes in terms of on the downside, I think you do want to be buying because I think once you get this fiscal cliff resolution, whenever it is, I think the markets will work higher because the underlying fundamentals in the U.S. economy are clearly improving, and you also have a stabilization or a soft landing happening in China at the same time. David Kelly, what do you want to be doing here? What's your strategy for the fiscal cliff? Do you think we go over it, and what do you want to do in terms of investing? Well, for, for a long-term investor, you don't try and play this one because uh, I agree with Stephanie about the market probably going higher once they get a resolution. They will get a resolution. Uh, it's possible it could go into early January. I still think they, they're more likely to get a resolution done before the end of the year. But either way, they'll get a resolution done. And when that happens, then we'll revert to looking at the U.S. economy, which is actually, as Stephanie said, strengthening a little bit here. And also the extreme and relative valuations. And the extreme and relative valuations between um, high-quality fixed income and equity will push money towards equities. So I would not run for, the, run for cover here because of the volatility here. I think you just have to uh, you know, hold your ground through this and hope that the market moves higher next year. Bob Pisani, this uh, activity at the close today, you surprised at what happened? You know, we had $3.6 billion of stock to buy at the close, and then we went all the way up about yeah. 30 points in a few minutes, only to come right back down. Yeah, no, uh, great volume, by the way. We're going to do a billion shares uh, right here on the floor of the NYSE. That's a very rare day. Normally, we do about $600 million. What happens in these imbalances is that uh, the indexes are reweighted, but if the index has got a billion dollars in stocks in it, it's still got a billion dollars in stocks after the reweight. You're simply moving around the money that's in the index uh, in the different stocks themselves. So you might get a little bit of changes in the stocks, but the actual money there, the whole pot stays relatively the same. I was very encouraged today, Maria. Some people might be discouraged, but encouraged when you saw very little movement in the stock market in the middle of the day when Representative Boehner came out and said that they've gone nowhere on the talk. Senator McConnell, McConnell described the White House offer as comical. That normally would have moved stocks down, but it didn't today, and I think it's a sign that a lot of people still believe a deal is is coming. Rick Santelli, what's your take on all of this? Well, I think that there was no volatility on Boehner's comments because Geithner's plan was out there to everybody to see last night. So nothing new was added into the mix. I now think it moves from, you know, we know the games are going on and we're not going to hear anything sensible. So now it becomes a time clock issue. And I think sometime around the third week in December, if you think the last hour was volatile, going from minus 20 to plus 4, you ain't seen nothing yet. And one other point, all the guests like the economy. I'm not disputing good things, but here's what I see. GDP didn't have a lot of consumption. Today, personal income and spending, the spending was down a couple of tenths. And next week, we have two jobs report. And one could argue the combination of ADP and BLS might just be barely above the 171 from just the BLS last month. People can't spend without jobs. Same old story, in my opinion. Yeah, but David Kelly, what about that? I know you don't want to be a short-term trader and you don't want to have these knee-jerk reactions. But let's face it, if we go over the fiscal cliff and this market takes ahead. I mean, there's a lot of room for disappointment in this market. This market's trading as if a deal gets done by the end of the year. If we don't, we can see a sizable decline. We've got to be ready for that. So as an investor, what do I want to do to protect myself? Well, well, the problem is, uh, the problem is, I don't trust anything that's coming out of either side in Washington. I mean, you never lead with your best offer, your best and final offer, and, and clearly they're just playing this dance here. The problem is, for an individual investor, you could get out, you could try and make some some bet on increased volatility, you could you could try and uh, bet on treasuries. But as soon as two, uh, as Boehner and Obama walk out on the White House lawn, which they will do, I believe, at some stage over the next month, as soon as that happens, everything's going to flip the other way. So, you know, I'd, I'd like 
like to find a way to play the market, but I think you know, for long-term investors, valuation gets more and more important the more you stretch things out. And the key thing that people are missing here is, I agree with Rick, the, the economy is not that strong, but it is still growing steadily, and valuations are so extreme between fixed income, high-quality fixed income and equities, that you know which way the money is going to go when things settle down. And I just wouldn't want to be on the wrong side of that trade. Stephanie Link, that's basically the way you feel. I mean, you've got uh, sort of opportunities out there. How do you see it, Stephanie? Well, see, I, I think what you want to do is you want to use the volatility, use the declines, and go back to the companies that reported good third quarter earnings. Go back to an eBay. Stick go, to fundamentals. Go back to, right, go back to Starbucks. Go back to those. Or you also can focus on some of the some of the themes, right? Housing is still in recovery mode, and that I know it's well known, but if those stocks were to pull back, you'd get a great opportunity to buy a Home Depot or a Toll Brothers or a, co a number of companies. Um, and also on the consumer, the consumer confidence was at four-year highs. And I think that, and, and that is in spite of all that's going on. So can you imagine if we get a resolution, what that will do and where there will be good opportunities? So those stocks, if they pull back, I think those are the ones you also want to be buying. We've already seen Bob Bassani, uh, a handful of uh, pretty good selling, given the fact that people are worried about higher taxes. I guess it makes sense to unload some of your winners if you're sitting on big gains, get the 15% cap gain tax now rather than yeah. the potential of a 25% in just a couple of months. Well, it, broader issue, it, uh, in professional investors got a real problem. A lot of them have been underperforming throughout the year. You get a lot of S&Ps up 12%. A lot of people I know are up 4 6 7%. That's underperformance. So they've got a real problem now. They need alpha this year. They need out, outperformance in the last month. They've got to stay invested or find some way to outperform or they're going to have some problems. Problems at the end of the year. So what do you do? This is a real tough situation because the fiscal cliff has thrown in additional uncertainty. All right. Thanks, everybody. We okay. appreciate it. Have a good weekend. We'll see you soon.